an American Revolution. And by the astonishingly simple new Sony Handycam, all the excitement of video movies now in the palm of your hand. Sellout crowd on hand on a slightly overcast day here in Irving, Texas, 75 degrees. The Cowboys in Atlanta heated up that temperature considerably in the second quarter when we had three personal foul penalties. Yards rushing Atlanta with 119 to the Cowboys, 72. Passing yardage heavily in favor of the Cowboys. The quarterback sacks also that direction. But look at Atlanta's time of possession. Despite all that, they still trail 17-10. But that rushing yardage really was perplexing, I'm sure, to Ernie Stockner and the Cowboy defense, the, the game plan that Dan Henning put together. Well, what they did was expecting them to come out with three wide receivers. The Cowboys matched them up with five defensive backs. And so now, obviously, what Henning said, well, look, if you're going to do that, we'll just come out and run the football. Now, they ran the football and ran it well. Our game is at halftime, and coming up next, a really potentially exciting game between the 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams, along with Chicago, one of two remaining undefeated teams, and the 49ers in danger of really digging a hole from which they might not be able to extricate themselves. And Eric Dickerson got that great start on the Monday night game after he ended his holdout up in Seattle, but has not gone over 100 yards since. It has been, by and large, a Ram defense which has led them to that 7-0 mark, and the 49ers trying to find the solution. Well, and you, and you look into that, and the other thing behind that is the great tradition between the 49ers and the Rams. When I growing up as a kid, always the Rams and the 49ers, Brody, Gabriel, you know, I always loved the matchup. Now we have Brock in Montana. 49ers are the defending Super Bowl champions, and the, of course the Rams should, everybody said 7-0, they probably should win that game. So it should be a great football game, Vern. Mick Luckhurst will kick off as we get set for the second half. Robert Levette and John Williams are the Cowboys' two deep men. That will hop in front of Levette and goes out of bounds. A delay of game call, so they'll take it back, and Luckhurst will kick it off from the 30-yard line after the five-yard penalty. The Cowboys passed 21 times on first down. Now, the last four or five of those were in the shotgun after the one minute uh, they got the ball back with a minute to play. But still, that's an extraordinary memory of passing down. Well, if you look at that and you ask yourself, how do the Cowboys believe that their best, believe their best chances for victory today when they have the football? And you look at that graphic, well, if they've got it on first down, you can bet one thing, babe. Tom Landry, as you see him right there, is going to put it in the air, and he has 21 times. Danny White is 12 of those 21 for 164, which indicates that every pass has come on first down. Right. You know, sometimes you can talk about a defense like the Cowboys and you say, well, they're outstanding against the deep, against the run. But what you fail to realize is no one's running the football on them. They're throwing for 300 yards and just the opposite for the Falcons. So that can be misleading, that stat about great against the run and poor against the pass. Luckhurst for the second time in the second half. Robert Levesque. Georgia Tech. Cowboys will open up their camp in the third quarter from the 25 and a half yard line. Johnny, Johnny Taylor, Taylor 96. 96. Made they the tackle. Has been starting at left outside linebacker today. They have Rady, number 59, taking his spot. Atlanta 1 and 6, but in most of their games, the Cowboys 5 and 2. There's John Rady, number 59. Atlanta lost guard John Scully with a broken tibula in the first half. Danny White, 12 of 21. Let's see if he's got first down pass on his mind to open the half. Yep. He's got a man wide open. Cosby. And that's the second time Cosby's let one slip through his hands in as many weeks. And he was all by himself. Brady, 59, had him man for man. He came on the outside, sent Tiger Green, number 33, their safety, he rushes Danny White, and then 84, Cosby's his man for man outside, covered by what? Covered by a linebacker. Ideal situation. Great receiver, good quarterback, reads it, throws it, and then Cosby drops it. And one in the end zone a week ago that he let slip. It'll be second down and 10. Eight man in front for the Falcons. Door set, on and drops to the 21-yard line. Dan Benish, number 69. Former free agent out of Clemson made the tackle. 
And again, the Falcon defense against the run has been uh, superb. It'll be third down. What you're going to see is these are tackles, tackle, end. Then we have a tackle out here. This is a linebacker, and then outside is Tiger Green, who is blitzing inside, and they're down. They're gapping, 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 and they're running this, and, the, and, the, and they're going back to the strong as I see them come down inside the gaps. Nowhere to go for the running back. Third down, 15. Three-man rush and eight-man drop this time. And White goes deep. Bobby Butler, a flag. Now. Butler will be called for pass interference. I believe it was 23. So many times you will see a defensive back when he is going to get a penalty for interfering with the receiver, a, a receiver's ability to catch the football. He more than likely has to run through that receiver, Vern, before the ball gets there. That's exactly what happened that time. 23 Butler went through. Pass interference. Defense, first and 10. There you go. Bobby Butler from Florida State was a number one draft choice of Florida State, of, of uh, Atlanta. Now, Butler goes through, as you can see right there, Renfro. He went through Renfro, bumped him before he got to the football. Even though he was playing the football, he went through the receiver and got the penalty. The Cowboys were going to make him their first-round draft choice back three years ago. Atlanta picked him 24th, and the Cowboys set for Howard Richards. Door set across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Dorsett has a 60 yard run for a touchdown today. On the other nine carries, he has 11 yards. Yeah, but when you look at it, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? 7.1 average. That's like throwing a football. You, you complete seven of, of 20 and you get 300 yards. And gee, well, you had a lousy day. Yeah, but that 300 yards sure looks good. That, that, that it doesn't say tip balls and all things like that. Second and six, 17-10. Dallas leads 13-18 to go third quarter. Opening series in the second half. Dorsett up to the 45 yard line after coming left and runs into Tiger Green defensive back from Western Carolina number 33. But you, you asked Dan Henning about Tiger Green's nickname last night. Well yeah I asked him I said coach does he have a first name he said sure he does his name's George. I said well see why they call him Tiger. Tiger Green's like a boxer you know Tiger Green but George George Green doesn't have near the impact that if you say Tiger Green on the stop or then, if you say George Green. Then Henning said, well, he's playing more like a cub it's right now. It's a tiger cub. <laughs> Third and two. 17-10, Cowboys lead. Danny White, right side. Scott Case with a coverage, number 25, on Timmy Newsom. It'll be fourth down. Case playing with a severely bruised thigh. And Newsom can't hang on. Number two draft choice from Oklahoma in 1984. Case was a young man in Seattle. Had a bruise, left the, left the game, had a growing. He left the game. Finally, they only end up with four defensive backs. They have to come in with a fourth linebacker and play the Seattle team in the last drive with only four defensive backs and four linebackers, and therefore they drove down and won the game. Paul Scanty got a touchdown pass from Craig. Anthony Allen has returned just one today, and Saxon is on to punt for the third time. 17 10 12 24 to go third quarter end over end kick and Allen lets it bounce it takes an Atlanta bounce out of bounds near the 21. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the Atlanta Falcons is prohibited. It said the Philadelphia Eagles on that little card I just read, but I don't think they have anything to do with this game. Seattle over the Jets, 14-0 in New York. That's a third-quarter score. Atlanta trailing by seven. Dave Archer, free agent from Iowa State. Six of 13. He was 20 of 30 last week in the win over New Orleans. And he'll throw on first down with good protection. Lobs it out, caught by Joe Washington. Or is it White Shoes? It's Billy Johnson, number 81. Indianapolis now leading over Green Bay by 17 points. And New England has come back and gone on top of Tampa Bay by two. Denver's lead over Kansas City is still 17. Second and 
second down five. Atlanta trailing the Cowboys 17-10. Flag is down on the far side of the field. Gene Lockhart made the tackle, and Michael Downs also in there. Backfield call against Atlanta. This is their passing set, Vern, where they're, as we look here, we have three wide receivers, Anthony Allen, Charlie Brown, and Billy White, Shoes Johnson, one back, one tight end. They come out and they run the football. Motion, number 88, offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. That's Arthur Cox, the only remaining tight end. Now in a minute, if they're not successful with this set, they'll come back in, they'll bring Cox in, then they'll bring in 45 Ken Wisenhunt. 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 Got it. <laughs> they'll bring him in, they'll bring in Al Matthews. They will come in with three tight ends and then run the football. So it's it's really a good job of mixing up the fronts, trying to match up with the Cowboys and confusion. Archer's team facing a second down and 10 now. Jones coming, pass is man is open, and it hits Ricky Eastman on the helmet. He had his back turned, and the receiver was there. Charlie Brown came down inside, was on the post, and had his man had his man beaten. As you can see, as the ball is in the center of your screen, has his man beaten. And the ball is thrown behind his Eastman. Ricky Eastman, number 42, sits there and hits him right in the back of the head. Now, once again, look at Archer. Dog gone. I can't believe it. I haven't gotten one of those in yet. It's frustrating for a young quarterback to have opportunities like that and see him go to the side and not have any big results. 20, 25-yard game would have been nice. Thing. Now third and 10 instead, trailing by 7, 17 to 10. Nine men in front for the Cowboys. Now eight as one drops off. Here comes the blitz. Archer rolls out, pulls up. Fumble! Atlanta, I think, has recovered. Atlanta, Atlanta does recover. Jeff Keywell. Mr. Archer was popped loose of the ball. And Rick Donnelly comes on to punt. That will go as the fourth quarterback sack. The Falcons had given up 25 sacks in the first six games and only three in the last two before today. Well, earlier in the first quarter, we saw this same situation third down. This time they sprinted to the right side. This time they turn around and go back to the left side. Same results. Bill Bates back to return the punt of Rick Donnelly. Fine kick. Bates at the 42. Cowboys' average punt return this year has been 3.4. That's one of the lowest in the leagues. A 42-yard kick, nothing on the return. Dallas still leads it. We are back at Texas Stadium in Irving with 10.09 to go third quarter. Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw here at the midway point of the 1985 season. The Dallas Cowboys leading here by seven. Chicago has extended its lead over Minnesota to 13 in the third quarter. Heck of a fight with Miami coming back now, trailing Detroit by only three up in the Silver Dome in the third quarter. I the Cowboys have, excuse me, Terry. So I was just saying, I wonder if my good buddy Joe Ferguson's quarterbacking for the Lions this week. Did uh, at the end of last week, didn't he? Sure did. Did a good job. First down and 10. Danny White again to throw on first down. Fires it out to Newsom. It'll be second down and 10. One of the joys of working for CBS and working particularly in the National Football League is the chance we have to meet fine couples around the league associated with various teams. And among the finest people I have ever met are Charlie and Lynn Dayton of the Atlanta Falcons. Charlie is the public relations director of that team. His wife, Lynn, underwent very serious surgery some time back and is recuperating back home in Atlanta. And Lynn, we love you. And we're thinking about you. Best of luck. Second down and 10. 10.03 to go. Third quarter. Timeout. Clock was uh, almost down to zero. And so Danny White has to waste one and go over and talk with Tom Landry about why things didn't work. Gary Hogaboom standing by with Jim Schaffner on the left-hand side. Yeah. 
Cowboys in 1985 have only lost more than they've taken in two games at Detroit at Philadelphia. That's the column on the right hand side when they gave it up nine times and were able to get it from the opposition only twice. But look at that takeaway giveaway ratio in the five wins Terry. Well, you, if you're going to be successful in the National Football League, this ratio on the left, the plus 14, is outstanding. If it stays there, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to say that, well, hey, the Cowboys are going to be there at the end of this thing. But anytime you're going to keep take it away from someone more than you're going to give it to them, you should be winning. And well, Dallas I, is. I would have liked to have been on the sideline that time and listen to Coach Landry and and Danny White as we look at Coach Landry there. An interesting person. I've had opportunity to be around him a couple of times, of course, play against him several times. And people ask me sometimes, if you could have played anywhere else other than Pittsburgh, where would you have liked to have gone? Of course, Atlanta was always on my mind and New Orleans. But as it turns out, I would have liked to have played for this guy, only to have picked his brain, if that is at all possible, and find out just what it is about this system that's so successful, why it works. And I would have I would have loved to sit in on those sessions with him. And the other man, of course, would have been Shula in mind. I felt like if I'd have had Shula and this guy, Tom Landry and Chuck Nolan, put the three together, and if I had that ability to pass that on, I'd have been one a heck of a great coach, Vern. You picked three pretty good ones, two of them. I would have loved Lombard. Uh, Lombard Party too, if he'd have been here. Would you? Yeah. Yeah, he's my kind of guy. Matter of fact, you remind me a lot of Vince. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elsewhere in the NFL, St. Louis over Houston 10-6 in the third quarter, and Buffalo has increased its lead over Philadelphia 17-0 in the third quarter. How about those Bills? Look at those Jets. How about the Seattle Seahawks rebounding with a 14-0 lead? Our score 17-10, 10 3 to go, second down and 10. White lobs it out to a wide open Tony Hill, his eighth catch of the day, and that will be a first down at the 46. Bobby Butler, number 23, made the tackle, but Tony Hill is having a big afternoon. Well, the thing that's so so open about this is that at Butler, 23 at left corner, has Hill. Now, you see him dropping off, respecting him, and what happened was the middle linebacker, 50, Buddy Curry, he blitzes, and when he blitzes, there's no one in the middle other than a safety who is way deep, and that, si that time, Bobby Butler had this guy, Hill, man for man, he makes a catch. Look at that, eight for 122 yards in a TD. 40. Cornwell out. Now we bring Newsom back in. They didn't really know what they wanted to do. Didn't have the right personnel there. 9.20 to go, third quarter. 17-10. Blitz coming. Pass in the flat. Dorsett tries to do a little dance on Buddy Curry. That time they sent another linebacker. Number 58 came from the outside. David Fry, he blitzes from the outside. And they have a screen on Vern. And when you blitz one side, that makes a linebacker. There's 58, David Fry, an impact player, as they like to call him. They've used him a lot in passing situations when they went to four linebackers and only four defensive backs. But the thing is, when they blitz, the other linebacker had the back coming out man for man. They had a screen on. And Buddy Curry had him covered like a blanket. Second down and 10. 17-10, Cowboys lead. Stunts up front defensively. White to Cosby. Doug drives for the first down. That'll learn him a fumble. Crowd. There is a fumble, and that ball is still live. David Fry, the man about whom you just spoke, has gotten the turnover. This was a play that we had seen earlier where Cosby will come outside, make a little five-yard down break to the sideline route, and then on top of him, you will see Renfro go down 15 yards and hook. They got the old D-hook kind of routine, and if the linebackers go deep, then, then White will hit the tight end Cosby. That's what he did. Good job by Cosby. Now, as you're going to see, White's coming out. He's a safety, sees what's happening, turns around, Cosby wide open, fires it to him. Now Renfro comes in, tries to hit. Now Doug doing a great job here of getting the first down. Now he's hit from behind. That time, who came in there and hit him? That's Case, 25. And then, holy cow, there's David Fry, 58, picks it up. And now Atlanta has the football on the 45. Van Tyser had to make the tackle. It's a 17-10 Cowboy lead. Dallas commits its second turnover. Archer will throw on first down. He's going deep right side for Stacy oh. just off his fingertips. Had him. Now, 
this is an outstanding throw. Stacy Bailey, 82, can look at his hands, he can look at his wrist, but he should have caught that football in a game like this that's so close. You have to come up with the big plays. You're not going to get these opportunities that often. Boy, look at a nice arching pass, beautiful spiral. Bailey stretches out, makes an attempt, good attempt to catch the football, hits him in his hands, and he drops the football. One of the few times Atlanta has gone directly at Everson Walls, and they did that time. Bailey, as we said, has, has been having problems with back and rib injuries. Now David Archer, 7 of 16, has been intercepted just once. That by Dexter Freescale back in the first half. Billy White shoes Johnson in motion. Gerald Riggs. No, it's Archer. That's a delayed, uh, deliberate play. And now a flag goes down, face mask. That was a planned play. And just about fooled everybody. Face mask. Cowboys line up this time. Burn showing blitz, faking blitz. And then they pull out. That time they sent Bates 40. Face mask. Number 40 on the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. There's Bates, number 40 from Tennessee. One of the real hitters. Now you're seeing him at the end of the play. He's blitzing on this play. Archer comes back to Bates. And initially, he started off going the other way. Turns around and comes back, and Bates grabs him. Did you see the face mask burn? I did indeed. <laughs> <laughs> that one I could catch. Well, they... Landry looking stoically on as the Cowboys. Slot man is uncovered. Now Clint Scale sees it. He moves over to cover. And here's Archer. There he is, wide open. At his best. Caught by Randy White, short of the first down. This time he has Riggs wide open in the end zone. No one within sight of him. Riggs is 25 yards behind him. One of the problems young Archer has is when he starts running, he runs. And when he learns later on, as he grows and develops as a quarterback in this league, as we look at 16, Archer, is the thing when you get loose, when you shake loose, and you start running, eyes up field, look up field, see what you see. He had Anthony Allen, 85, coming back for him, wide open for a first down, and then way in the corner of the end zone with no one near him was Riggs, who was also wide open for a touchdown. Third and one from the Cowboy 46, 17-10 Dallas lead. 7.35 to go, third quarter. Riggs. That should be enough for the first down. Now they have Benson in. You know, they've had so many injuries. Benson's been out it's, as their H-back guy, the U-back, they call him. Move him in motion. Now Benson comes back out and Cox is going back in. This is all kind of players moving in and out. The thing we were talking about a while ago as we look at Riggs was if Archer's one of the things that a quarterback, a young quarterback, and I did this, Vern. I, I ran in the first five years for almost 3,000 yards, and after that, my remaining nine years, I didn't rush for 300 yards. It went the other way. But the thing is, you have this ability to run, and you use it, and that scares teams to death. But later on, you'll be more effective. Keep the running ability, but when you get free, when you get free look for the big plays downfield. They'll be there. And in instead of Dave Archer, he's still too young to know he shouldn't run. Delay of game call. Too much time. He was trying to get his man in motion that time, and he wouldn't. Anthony Allen, 85, was to come in motion. He couldn't get him to come in motion. Finally, he did, and it was too late. Delay of game. Terry, there's so many young quarterbacks. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Have a capacity, to, or a tendency, rather, to look at one receiver, boom, he's covered, I'm gone. Did you do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a real problem for a Let me a tell you something. I was having such a bad time in Pittsburgh. I've, I developed this system. I'm going to drop back if Swan is covered. I'm going to Cunningham. I'm going to Stallworth. And I did that until I got my confidence back and then got back to reading coverages. Yes, you do. You do that when you have to. White shoes and most The Blitz beats the draw play. Randy White, number 54. There was some question last week in Philadelphia about where the Cowboy defensive line had been. They didn't put that much pressure on Eagle quarterback Ron Jaworski. But you know, Stotner, Ernie Stotner, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, told me that's Ernie on the right of your screen in all blue, Cowboy blue. Gene Stallings defensive back. He told me that because of the rule changes for the offensive linemen now, we have to blitz to get pressure on the quarterback. Second down, 17. Stunts. Archer going deep. Charlie Brown. 
and it's incomplete. Brown, of course, acquired for R.C. Thielman in a preseason trade from the Washington Redskins. One of the things that they've been doing and been doing successfully, but it's been more to stop the run now, is you're going to look. Bates coming outside, coming, clink scale, checking, and then dropping back out. Sending these receivers not so much as to blitz the quarterback while he's attempting to pass. See him come over and cover now. Both outside safeties are coming. That is a, more like that double outside linebacker blitz where they gap the tackles in the ends, and that is more designed to stop the run. Nine-man front for the Cowboys. See if the blitz is there on third down and 17. Here it comes. And got it, got it. Dexter Clinkscale. That is a classic example of the blitz when it works. This is not that complicated a pass. Most systems are designed solid one side where a quarterback will read clean scale, been their big guy all year, downs coming up inside, safety's over here, he's covering this man, man for man, simple blitz, nothing to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys coming, and there's 47, Dexter clean scale as he gets in and makes the sack. 26 also in there was putting the pressure on was Michael Downs. But that was not a complicated blitz, just seven people, they should have been able to Pick it up. Whistles blow. You know, go ahead, Terry. Brian, one of the things in talking to Dan Henning and in talking to Archer also, I asked him about their blitz and how they were going to pick it up. And, and their system is designed. Is the, there you go. Thank you. It's designed one side or the other. You always want to make sure the quarterback is solid on one side. And Pittsburgh is always either the right side or the slot side. You didn't worry about blitz controls there. If they can't, let them come. You're solid. If they had four guys to the other side come, then you blitz control. That way it is easy. They had this system. I'm surprised that seven guys were able to get in and sack him. Nevertheless, they did. And as a result, it's fourth down. 31. Bates waits at the Cowboy 27. Rick Conley the punt. Oh, oh, what a great kick. One of those sideliners that floats forever. Over the shoulder by Bates, who loses yardage back to the 16. A terrific kick of 47 yards with an outstanding hang time of 4.8 seconds. To play in Irving, Texas. Dallas leading Atlanta 17 10, 441 to go in the third quarter. The Cowboys defense able to hold Atlanta after the fumble recovery by David Fry. Coming up later, the 49ers and the Rams, or some of you will see the Giants down in Superdome against Bob Phillips and the New Orleans Saints. Dallas first down 10, it was 17 10 and a half, and it is still there. Wide split, both wide receivers to the right side, dropping the screen. Again, Dallas going on first down. Intercepted by Bobby Butler. That is the third Dallas turnover, and Cosby makes the tackle. The only two games Dallas has lost this year were at Detroit, at Philadelphia. In both games, they turned the ball over more times than they received it. They have now coughed it up three times in this game. Simple play action, go motion, try to isolate man for man. Butler sitting there on heel. Now, heel run, this is a lousy route. I don't know what he's trying to do here. But as, as Danny comes out of play action and fires the quick slam, heel actually was to go down four yards and go flying across the middle. He goes down, looks for the football, and is actually backpedaling, runs a lousy, lousy route. And I would blame that interception on Tony Hill and not the quarterback, Danny White. Maybe at the other side, White shouldn't have thrown it. Bobby Butler said he wanted at one point to have been drafted by the Cowboys. It didn't work out that way. The running play to Riggs doesn't either. And he's caught by Dutton. John Dutton from the University of Nebraska. I met John Dutton when I went up there. I was on a, you're not going to believe this, but I was doing a country western tour. <laughs> and I was up at the University of Nebraska. I was up there doing a concert. I went down and met this guy, and they introduced me to him, said he'd just been drafted by the Colts, their number one draft choice. And uh, talk about a big fella, you know, and if you meet those guys, Jones is also 6'8", six, 6'9", six, tall as the world. Yeah, they're the, one thing about them, they don't shrink. Is they, no, they don't. Second down, nine. Archer intercepted, picked off by the Cowboys. Walls. and Walls. Trying to get it to Stacy Bailey coming across the middle. 
pressure, took his eyes off, and then drilled the football in there. This pass shouldn't have been thrown. We're going to look at it again. An opportunity here to score. It comes out, looks to the left, covered, covered. Now, without setting his feet, just turns around, and when he does that, he cannot see the far back right side, which is Wall's territory, and he drifts back up inside, Vern, and steals that pass for an interception. As you see Stockner trying to congr congratulate him as he comes off. First down 10, Dallas from the 19-yard line. 17-10 still, 345. Cowboys probably will throw it. No, this time they run it. And not for much. Door set for no game. You know, one of the things that has happened for so many years, the Cowboys, especially when teams play them, and we've talked about this before, but when you get inside this 20-yard line, when you start threatening them to get in that end zone, they change for some. Look like they turn into all kinds of different animals. They get to different coverages you haven't seen and have no idea where they, can, they came up with them. That time, Archer coming out, looking to his left, confused to the left, turns around and just throws instinctively without knowing what the coverage was, and that's why it was picked off by Walls. White now has the play that was flashed in by Gary Hogan. And this time they'll throw deep in the middle. Tony Hill was a kind of a goofy route that time. There was a mix up between White and uh, Tony Hill. He made at least three zigs and zags while going <laughs> downfield. Well, you're looking at an option route. The quarterbacks and every team has plays where they have options, and the options are not on 20, Kaysen, but they're on the safety. What is the safety doing? Now, Kaysen is, has Tony Hill man for man. He sets him up. Now he goes inside and says, oh, no, there's the safety. Now he tries to go back out. Danny saw the safety, but Hill didn't see the safety. He throws it away from the safety where Hill should have been running the route. See how simple that is? I knew you would explain that to me. <laughs> I don't know if I explained it to myself. Third and ten from the shotgun. Blitz. Oh, shit, my. White reads it. Hill makes the grab. Man, what a throw. Kaysen went for the intercept and almost got it, but Tony Hill catches this one. And that's his ninth catch of the game. 13-yard gain, 2.57 to go, third quarter. You're going to see an all-out blitz. It's now Buddy Curry coming right up the middle outside. Richardson coming, and then it leaps Hill man for man on the left side. Kaysen has him again. Good throw, good catch. 17-10, Dallas leads. They led at the half by that same margin. And White will throw on first. Fires it. Mike Renko has this catch up near the 43, and that will be enough for another first down. Wendell Kaysen made the tackle. It's a gain of 11. The thing that's happening now is that the Falcons have gone into somewhat of a blitzing scheme, gaming, sending their linebackers, isolating Case and 20 this time on Renfro. Couldn't handle Hill. Now he's got Renfro leaning on the inside, leaning, pushing him outside, then coming back inside. There he is wide open. There's the throw. Got his body between the, the defense, defensive back and, and made a good catch. Looks how they lean him out, set him outside, and push off of him and come back inside. It opens up the holes. First and 10, Dallas. They're on 43. Play and they'll throw on first down. This is deep for the running back, Kenny Newsom, and incomplete at the 30-yard line. Newsom looking back over his left shoulder and the ball thrown to the outside over his right shoulder. Buddy Curry was the defender, number 50. The thing they had again, and we've seen this so many times, is the fact that the Cowboys are coming out, play action. Running back, drawing up the linebackers. Case comes up. Now, Curry, 50, is, has to pick up the running back man for man. Newsom covered him well. Danny threw the ball the only place he could have thrown him. No way that pass could have been, in, could have been completed. That brings up a second down and 10. White, 214 yards. 2.05 to go through the quarter. Atlanta playing games defensively once again. This time there is no blitz. White back in the face of a stunning defensive line. As he makes the catch at the 48 yard line, short of the first down. Kaysen from the University of Oregon, where he was a two year starter, another of the free agents. He was cut, then brought back when they had all those three injuries in the second half of the San Francisco game. Well, you talk about problems as you look. They brought in Tiger Green, free agent, Case, Oklahoma. They've all been injured. They've lost uh, Johnson's out for the season, I suppose. Danny Wagner, another free agent. Gosh, this whole team is full of free agents in the secondary and playing well, playing aggressive. Third down, four. Three man rush, eight man drop. White has the catch. 
to Doug Cosby, and that'll move the chains as uh, Cosby makes the grab at the Atlanta 44-yard line. David Fry on the stop. Good smart play here by the tight end as you look at Cosby is the fact that he comes off the line of scrimmage. He knows how much yardage he has to get burned, pushes a sec the linebackers deep, then stops, turns around, and White reading it, pops him with the football. He had two more yards, just enough to get the first down. Interesting note on Doug. He said when he retires, he'd like to be a high school football coach. Would like to continue working with young kids. White again on first down. That was incomplete. Cowboys, that was the 16th time in 23 first down plays that Dallas has passed the ball. Well, Vern, you'll probably say that's the 25th time in 34 <laughs> plays, but you're going to see this time and time again, the fact that the Atlanta Falcons are sitting in there. They're going to keep Dorsett from getting any yardage. They're going to sit in there. They're going to play the run, and they're going to force you to throw the football and beat them throwing the football. This is no, hey, this is no scientific game here. We're just talking about how you're going to beat a team. They believe they're going to do it throwing the football. That's what they're doing. Second down and 10. 17 and 10, final minute, third quarter. Oh, Looks like the old option. Look at this. <laughs> you ran that one in Louisiana Tech. No way, baby. <laughs> Dorsett takes the pitch out and runs out of bounds. He has run out of bounds by Buddy Curry. I love this. This is something I would have never run. This is called the quarterback is vulnerable, I think. Danny's going to peel around and do some option right here. Down the line of scrimmage, key the end. He comes across. Here comes Dorsett. Tick, 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 little pitch back. What's this, baby? <laughs> this is great. There's the option. Why said, oh, please, penetrate. There's the penetration. There you go, Dorsett. You take the, you take the beating. <laughs> I don't know the last time the Cowboys have run that kind of play, but it's been a while. Third down from the shotgun. Rushes on. White gets out of it. Mobility, mobility of his own was able to get away from This time they flex Cosby out wide. Newsom 30s in the slot. Now you see Gann 76. He forces Danny out of the pocket. Danny gets outside and says, my goodness gracious alive, there's nobody out here. I'm going to get some big yardage. And that's what he does. Gets the old slide in there. First down, Cowboys. The Atlanta Falcons scored 10 points in the first quarter. The Cowboys 17 in the second. No scoring in the third. We are back for the final 15, week number eight of the 1985 National Football League season. The Cowboys and Atlanta Falcons, Dan Henning, has put together a masterful defensive scheme this afternoon that has uh, frustrated the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas leading 17-10, but again today, Atlanta is very much in this game. Now, their problems have come in the fourth quarter. They've been outscored 89-50 to in the fourth quarter so far this year. First down, 10 Cowboys operating from the Falcon 28-yard line. Face the blitz. White goes deep. On the hill again. First and goal at the one. 27-yard gain. His 10th catch of the day. Tony Hill ran over a photographer. And asked her if she's all right. Linebacker blitz, 58, David Fry, as you see in the bottom left, he blitzes, middle linebacker blitzes, Case of 20, once again isolated on number 80, Hill. Boy, that is a perfect pass, good concentration by Hill, as you see him deck the photographer. As a duty pay down on that sideline. Hill now with 10 for 162, he caught 11 in the loss at Detroit. That was a career high. First and goal for the one. Split backs, Salonen, Brian Salonen in motion. Play action. Danny White will stroll in untouched until he gets into the end zone. If you can bet one thing, if you're going to step into that end zone, they're going to forget you're a quarterback. You're a running back, and they're going to lower the boom on you. Danny, Danny did something there he shouldn't have done. He leaped high. I would have crawled down low, but he leaped high, and they scissored him. You know, this is old hat. Cowboys motions. Dive fake in there to Newsom. Come outside. Look at who's leading this out here. I can't see the number on the guard. 
Looks like 65. Oh, that's Kurt Peterson, right guard, 65. Play action, come outside, quarterback, power runner, gets in, touchdown. Raphael Septien will try and make it a 24-10 Dallas lead. Gary Hopenbloom will hold. Tom Rafferty the snap. Up and good. White gets the touchdown on the ground. The Cowboys extend their lead to 14. Rafael Septien will kick deep for the Cowboys. Cliff Austin and Dan Wagner are the two return men. That was an 81-yard drive in 12 plays, 3 minutes and 54 seconds. Tony Hill, one of the featured performers. One of the things we should do is go through the scoring passes in the National Football League and see how many of them quarterbacks have thrown from inside the five-yard line. I bet 70% of them are, are more even. Septien to kick off. 24-10, Dallas leads at 14.50 to go in the game. Watch that uh, rollout by Danny White to the touchdown that came from one yard away. Well, it's one of those simple plays that you love to do, and it's, a, it's an option, actually, where the quarterback will come out. You can see Peterson, the right guard, pulls and bleeds for Danny. Here comes Newsom, dive blocks in there, trap pulling by Gap. Danny fakes, comes outside, and when he gets outside, he says, where is everyone? There we, okay, there's... All right, nice. See Cooper, 61. He's blocking down. He's the tackle. And then 65, Kurt Peterson looking around for someone to block. Danny says, up in the air, baby. Probably saw the tailbacks do that out of the eye. Out of the of the David Archer back to throw on first down himself. That's caught by the tight end, Arthur Cox. Out on the right side. Cox from Texas Southern was a free agent back in 1983. He's a very confident young man. His great ability, uh, not a, not a, like we said earlier, not a tremendously strong arm, but he has the head, the head and the heart to be a great quarterback. Coming up, the 49ers against the Rams, or some of you will see the Giants in New Orleans, second game of our CBS doubleheader. Second down and two for the Falcons. Gerald Briggs, big hole. And a first down out at the 37-yard line. Cowboys came up that time impressed. Press Dexter Klingscale over the tight end, and then we're going to send him on a blitz. You're looking at Riggs. You know, one of the reasons Riggs is such a great running back is like so many great players, he, he's from Louisiana. You knew that. I did know that. I didn't know that until last night. Well, look, Tallula, Louisiana. Another great North Louisiana guy. Knew his mom and dad real well. First running pick. They again. almost did. Yeah. 49-yard line of Dallas, and all of Tallulah just stood up and hollered, <laughs> most of whom are related to Gerald Riggs, he said. You're going to see an interesting play. Archer's going to come out. Look at the guards pull and the tackles pull, and they come down kind of like an old, uh, like a sucker play almost. Just turn around straight under ball handling, and the guards pull and go one way. The tackles read it, and they actually run by Riggs, who goes up inside and gets the first down. They started the day rusher in the NFL behind Wilder, Dorsett, and Freeman McNeil. He has 115 yards now. Oh, boy. Picked off. Tip. And then Mike Hagman completes the job. Gene Lockhart got a mitt on it. Hagman, both hands. It's still a learning process for the young man from Soda Springs, Idaho. You're going to see the middle linebacker Lockhart, 56. As he comes back, he's going to read Archer's eyes. As you see him in the center of your screen, he drops back. He's reading the quarter. He's going back to the strong side, reading. He sees the quarterback look to the right, right there for the interception. He tips it up. Heckman, 58, comes over and makes the interception, trying to get the ball in there. Stacy Allen. First down, 10, Dallas. Section of the game for the Cowboys. Mike Renfro starts in motion. Dorsett on the sweep. Gets a good block from Kurt Peterson and is out of bounds at the 37 yard line. Dorsett with a 60 yard touchdown run in the first half, but the other yards have come very, very difficult. It's a good job again by the right guard, Peterson. Simple sweep, as you're going to see Newsom. There's a good block on Fry. Now here's Peterson out front, 65 leading for Dorsett. Fry once again gets up and chases. Hey, that's good hustle. Then Buddy Curry, 50, comes over and finishes him off. First down by the Cowboys. Dorsett with 89 yards and 14 carries. 
He started the day as the number two running back behind Wilder of Tampa Bay, trailing by only 15 yards at the midway point of the season. Tony Dorsett has never won the NFL's rushing title, despite having gained all those thousands of yards. Here's White. Oh, and that was almost picked off, and a flag goes down in the offensive backfield. Well, Danny's going to pick himself up off the turf. It's going to be, it looks like, roughing the quarterback. There it is. Seventy-four pits. Left tackle for the Falcons. There's White. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number seventy-four defense. Fifteen yards. First and ten. Well, when you're having a long day, you look at seventy-four in the middle of your screen as he escapes and has a shot on White. Hey, I don't see it, but I don't either. You know, he tackled him in the back. Not a bad. You know, the, he just gotten his hand through. And uh, maybe they wanted him to let up, but I can't see that. 74 was just doing his job. And uh, one thing about playing quarterback, you're going to get hit. Hey, you're going to get hit. You might as well get ready for that. And, you, and I don't think you ought to penalize people because they're doing their job. Well, they call Pitts that time. It's the first down at the 21-yard line for the Cowboys. That was, that was a, a pitiful call. <laughs> make a poet out of you yet <laughs> no I'm serious though you know you I agree with protecting quarterbacks I mean they're important to everyone the offenses but doggone it uh, I played this game and I took some licks and I, I was pride proud of myself that I was able to, to hang in there as long as I as I was able to Vern but when a guy just hits him in the back and knocks him down it doesn't look like he did it deliberately he was just still in he just had his momentum going and couldn't stop why throw a flat you know First final of the day, Denver wins by 20 over Kansas City. Houston leading St. Louis now by three in the fourth quarter. And Chicago by 20 over Minnesota. White, right side, Mike Renfro, first and goal. And Renfro with that sneaky little maneuver of leaning out and putting the ball as far forward as he can. It's a good job again. It seems like every time that they have a blitz on or have a man coverage on. The Cowboys are able to pick it up and then able to go out and hit their wide receivers who are covered man for man. This is just a good example of that. Renfro drives Butler down, pushes him deep, comes back, uses his great hands, makes a reception first down. Gosh, that's fun. As a player, I always loved it. Boy, when you knew you had something and it was working, stay with it. Pass a run. This play right here? Oh, I definitely think it's a run. What do you think? Pass. This would be contrary. Are you old dog? There's Newsom. Oh, intercepted. Watch this one. It's Scott Case and Danny White in a foot race. Should have been a run. Mercy. Should have been a run. Scott Case. Well, you live by the pass on the first down. You what? You died. You live by the blitz long enough. That baby will grow up and snatch you and bite you and hurt you. And the Atlanta happened. Falcons once again are still with us. Take a look, look at it. I'm sorry. You're going to see a little simple play action. Comes out. Levette comes up to block. There's Newsom wide open. Under throw by White. Case 25. Young man out of Oklahoma. Steps up underneath. And it's a foot race here. This is just a good job by White. Ribs and all to get over and save a touchdown. That is a 48-yard return as the Cowboys turn it over once again. 24-10. Atlanta trails. Danny White has been intercepted for the third time today. Uh, Gordon McCarter, I think they might be checking on the clock. You know, it's interesting. Last week against the Eagles, the Cowboys turned it over twice in scoring territory. Two interceptions by Wes Hopkins off of Gary Hogaboom. This time we've seen the Cowboys intercept. Uh, well, a 30-second clock operator, please reset to 30 seconds. There was a... Well, didn't know what, didn't want us to know what it was, so he turned it off. <laughs> But anyway, we've had them turn over. Now we get down here again. And the turnovers inside scoring ter in territory inside the 20 have been fatal, costly to the Cowboys. They lead by 14, but a lot of time remains. Just under 11 minutes. First down and 10, Atlanta. It has been a turnover-filled game so far. Randy White on the rush. Pass is caught. Arthur Cox. All the way to the 28-yard line before Ed Jones. And Cox gets up with elbows flying again. 
Well, this is one time when Har Archer says to himself, well, it's about time something good happened to me. This time he has Cox open. He thinks he's got a simple pass, and the ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage. But thank goodness for this young man's sake, Cox was able to make the reception and then ramble down the field and pick up a big first down. Cox with four catches now. Archer is 9 of 21 for 110 yards. Sacked five times, intercepted three times. First and ten. Now, clean scale flips it. Gerald Briggs coming left. Oh. Boy, did he bounce off Michael Downs. But, well, they came out the first time. The uh, Falcons did. They threw the football at Cox for a first down. They come out again. Cowboys sensing they were going to throw the football again. This time they come up inside with clean scale, bring him out, bring him back inside and blitz, and he's blocked. Downs comes and loops to the outside, and he's blocked, gets up, and finally makes the tackle, at, but not after Riggs had run right over him. That's a second down and three. 24-10, Cowboys lead. 10-06 to go in the game. down inside the 15 to the 12. Jeff Keywell also down there with the block. By the way, word from the Atlanta bench is that Rick Bryant has sustained an injury and will not return to the game. Defensive end for Atlanta. 9.45 to go in the game and the clock running. Gerald Riggs now with... You're going to see a good job by Matthews. He comes in fighting and double teams down inside on White and then to turn around and give it the back and back to the outside. There's Matthews inside, bang, right there. Boy, and a good read by Riggs as he comes back to the outside. Joe Washington, stutter step at the line and down at the 11-yard line. Bill Bates made the tackle. Washington, a young man whose team at Oklahoma won 34 games, lost one, and tied one. Quarterback by an old buddy who's probably watching up in Tulsa right now, Steve Davis, who does college work for us. Being colorblind, does he have the silver shoes on today? Uh, you know, Joe's always had those silver shoes no matter who he's played for. Wait a minute, you just gave me a scoop. That's I didn't right. know you were colorblind. Oh, yeah. It's like I'm through all those interceptions. Oh, oh. <laughs> Set me up again. 24 to 10, 840 to go in the game. Archer with a play action pass. End zone, incomplete. Victor Scott, second year man from Colorado, was right in front of Billy White Shoes Johnson. Kind of an interesting route this time where they run the same thing. They take they take Matthews 49, bring him back in motion on the play we'd seen a while ago where they double teamed on White and Dutton. Now they bring him down inside and then carry him on. Play action that time and try to hit Matthews, but didn't have enough room. You know, there's certain passes, Vern, that you're on the 10-yard line. You don't have a lot of room to, to clean people out. That's why a quarterback with a strong arm from the 10-yard line, the seams and zones and man coverages are smaller and tighter. A stronger arm helps you in cases like this where you really have to get it in there. Third and seven. Falcons trail by now, here's the blitz. There comes the blitz. There it is. They did a good job of picking it up. Oh, oh mercy. Scott had 90 yards. Had he been able to hang on. And Bill Bates was draped all over Dave Archer's middle. Victor Scott outside all by himself. Inside. We're going to see it. There it comes. Thurman. Here comes Bates. Outside. Checking this man here. Outside. Man for man. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Thurman coming. Picked him up. Good job. Downs coming. Picked him up. Good job. Then on the outside, 22 Scott. Man for man. Boy, he breaks on the football and almost has an interception. I believe I said earlier that was Bates. That was Downs, actually, number 26. Nick Luckhurst. One of two today. His streak of 17 straight ended. And this will come from 27, 28 yards out. It is no good. We'll return to Texas Stadium after this word from your local station. This is a Honda who invites you to see the new Accord hatchbacks and four-door sedans at your local Honda dealer. Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by Radio Shack, the computer experts. We're back at Texas Stadium with 834 remaining in the ballgame. The Cowboys up 24 to 10. We're driving for what seemed a clinching touchdown when Scott Case intercepted Danny White, returned 48 yards. 
But then uh, that drive stalled, and McLucker has just missed a field goal from makeable range, and now the Cowboys are back on offense. First down and 10. 24-10, Dallas leads it. Just over eight and a half remaining. Burn Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw from Texas Stadium in Irving. We've got the Rams and 49ers coming up, or New Orleans and the Giants, second half of the doubleheader. That pass out and caught by Mike Renfro. Elsewhere on this eighth week of the 1985 National Football League season, Washington has now defeated Cleveland. They even their record at four wins and four defeats. And they did so on the road. Chicago trying to go 8-0. and oh. Best start for that team since 1942. The Jets leading Seattle 23-14 fourth quarter. Houston leading St. Louis. The mm, Cardinals got problems. They do. And New England has now laid it on Tampa Bay. Philadelphia has fought from a 17-0 deficit to lead. New England over Tampa Bay 32-14. Second down and three with 7.50 to go in the game. set with 93 yards to try and get to the 100-yard mark, and that should be a first down. However, there's a flag down. He threw the flag right at Doug Cosby. I don't know that that's that that's man that did the holding, but there's the penalty. Let's see if it's number 84. Doug wouldn't appreciate me pointing him out like that, would he? Especially if it's not him. <laughs> I'll tell him you said it. <laughs> holding. Number 66, offense, Schultz. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Sorry, Doug. That is Chris Schultz, young man from Ontario. And uh, a bright hope of the future for that Cowboys offensive line. He's big, he's 6'8", 280. Talking and to Myers, Vern, they were saying this is one of the finest young offensive lines he's ever been associated with. Now you hear that, they've had some great players here in, in Dallas, but they do have some outstanding young talent. The offensive line coach and assistant head coach. Here's the blitz, and White rolls out. Fires it. Incomplete. Tiger, Tiger Green, excuse me, Vern. Tiger Green had Dorsett 33 on 33. Had him covered like a blanket. Once again, Atlanta blitzing, sending their linebackers, and the ability of a quarterback to recognize that pressure gets outside and uses his athletic ability, as Danny White did then, and then try to make a big play downfield. Probably could have picked up more yards ru running the football. Certainly didn't pick up any with an incompletion. White, 40 attempts, 22 completions, and the man you saw coming off the bench is the rookie from Alabama State, Carl Poe, number 81. He's got great speed. And he and Renfro both come to the right side. While Tony Hill lines up to the left, and the Cowboys go from the spread formation on third down and 13. Poe is the slot man. Goes deep. Renfro waits. What a catch! see a blitz again buddy curry 50 coming over right up the middle 36 coming from the outside danny wagner seven people coming and danny has to get rid of the football man what a catch renfro makes this time on bobby butler number 23 that is a first down at the atlanta 46 yard line mike said the other day he is he's probably in the top five on this dallas cowboy team when it comes to taking a loss hard he does hate to lose. He said Randy White probably hits the list. <laughs> no one would argue with that. Another delay a game. And White is furious. Now Danny's telling them they're starting the clock too soon. He says, look, you're starting the clock too soon. My people aren't back. You're starting it too soon. There's a little delay a game. Give it to us. Delay of game. Offense still first down. Now you saw Gary Hogaboom start to send the play in. Tom Landry closing in on his 250th career win. It's been kind of a sloppy game on behalf of the Cowboys, especially in the fact they've had two or three delay of games and three interceptions that Danny has thrown. Hasn't been a consistent, solid performance by their offense, but it has been the big play offense, the big balls, the big catches and runs they've made. Under six minutes now in the ball game. That flip into the flat for Cosby. Hang on, down low. Second down and 15. 
another final in the National Football League this afternoon. Detroit knocks off Miami in the Silver Dome. Detroit has now defeated the Cowboys, the 49ers, and the Dolphins. Not bad, huh? Not bad. All three games at home. Indianapolis fighting back. They lead Green Bay 30 to 10 in the fourth quarter. And the Cowboys lead here 24-10 with 5.53 to go in the game. Second down and 15. White in the face of the rush. Tony Dorsett. Spins. Oh, good move. Just short of the first down. That's that old patented spinner. Set him up, get inside, then dance back to the outside. You knew him when he was at the University of Pittsburgh, didn't you? Oh, yes. I remember his first game he ever played against the University of Georgia. There's the shot out. This is a simple screen there. You're going to see got the big man out front blocking for him. The little spin action, gets around, makes one man miss, and then finally bebops out of bounds with, uh, what, about a yard to go? Matter of fact, isn't it true that Jackie Sherrill asked you to help recruit him <laughs> for the University of Jackie Sherrill Department? came up before he got his big contract with those big high punk shoes and four or five colors on him and asked me to help him recruit what he thought was the greatest running back he had ever seen come out of high school. That was Tony Dorsett. Dorsett, back then. When you get famous and wealthy, then you got to change. And so when you if you have a name like Dorset, that, that's a good name. But if it's Dorset, it's got a little French to it. I kind of like it myself. If you ever change the spelling of your first name to T-E-R-R-I, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> you mean Terry? I'm history. <laughs> Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> well, I wish you'd change yours from Vern, because for a Southern boy to have to say Vern all day long, that is... <laughs> yeah, I know. It's tough. Coming up later, the 49ers and the Rams and the Giants in New Orleans. That's after this game, and we've got 5 0 3 to go in this one. First down and 10. Backs are in the eyes. Draw play. Dorsett. Going to have to freelance, and he loses yardage back to the. Oh, man. Good job that time, but 51 left outside linebacker Jeff Jackson. He just denied himself to be blocked, dared him to be blocked. Curry, 50. You know, you got to admire these this football team, the way they play. And the coach was right. They won't quit. They show a lot of heart. It's only a matter of time before they get consistent. And I know that the Falcon fans listening and watching and observing this will say, well, I don't agree with that. But, hey, I know I've played against this team, and I know just by what I've seen today that this football team will win a lot of football games. Maybe not this year, but they will win a lot of football games. They have been in just about every game despite the one and six record and they are in this one. Split backs, white back to throw again. Has to roll out. He may take a huge loss. Has no about this. Flags are down. Newsom has the ball and is caught and dropped to the 40-yard line. I'll tell you, Glenn Titansor with Mike can chasing. Mike Gann was chasing Dor was chasing White for everything he was worth. And right when he was getting ready to get the White Titans or peel back and, and nailed him. 21-17, Philadelphia comes back. Even their score, what? Four and four, four now. Four and four. Marion Campbell said he's been preaching to his kids that they can be in this division race. And they have now even their season record at four and four. They were down 17-0 in that game. Well, you got to figure Jaworski had another good game and probably had to come up with some more stakes for his lineman. Holding number 66 offense. Penalty declined. Third down. Schultz, Chris Schultz, left tackle, taking the place of Phil Paz Derek. You know, that 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 stake deal, you know, every time Jaworski doesn't get sacked, he has to buy the entire offensive line. I'm sure the receivers and running backs case of stakes. Now that's a lot, that's lots of meat. You know what? It happened a couple of weeks ago for the first time since 81, and uh, he said it cost him about 600 bucks. Hey, I'd cough up 600 bucks every. I'd cough up, cough up a thousand if I had it to make sure I didn't get hit. Third down and 17. 24 10, Dallas lead. Three man rush, eight man drop. Tony Hill, pass incomplete. Good anticipation by White on the re release of Hill's route, just that he anticipated it too deep, a little flatter, and he would have had a big play there. That'll bring on Mike Saxon with 3.32 remaining in the ballgame. And the Cowboys on top, 24-10. The road gets a little tough for Dallas now. They go into the stretch of their 
middle part of the season. They are at St. Louis for a Monday night game, then at Washington, and then back home against Chicago in the next three weeks. So two of the next three, next two are on the road. Could make or break their season, really, couldn't it, Vern? You bet. Three big games like that. Doesn't get any easier for Atlanta. They've got to go to Washington next week. Mike Saxon will punt. Anthony Allen on the kick. Two defeated Cleveland today, so. All right. Good kick. to see where he oh, <laughs> that, that football went right over that little orange marker down there. He could have gone either way on that. Well, he's got a smile, but Saxon doesn't. Timeout. <laughs> Late October in the northern part of Texas, but still kind of muggy here, so they've got the fans blowing on Tom Rafferty, Chris Schultz, and the rest of the offensive line as the defense. There's Tom Rafferty now in his 10th year out of Penn State said that this year's offensive team is just eons better than the one of a year ago. Last year, they would they had a third down and punt offense. They didn't. They had so many changes, they didn't know which way to head. But they had a lot of changes in personnel, and it not and that's not even to mention of the fact that they had problems at quarterback and the controversy. And that seems to be all history now. It's all behind them. Right now, Atlanta has to overcome a 14-point deficit with 3:24 to go in the game. Archer. It's Bob Holly who has come into the lineup. Bob Holly, new quarterback for the year, 132 yards, 68% completion, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Spent some time with the Washington Redskins. He's an Ivy Leaguer from Princeton. Nice to catch today for Cox. He's having a good day. Not a lot of yardage, so. There's two, and two for two as Joe Washington with the silver shoes does make the tackle. You were asking a while ago if he was still wearing the silver shoes, and he is. He, he is. Tell you, he can make that silver flash, too. It can really smoke. Our game is 24-10 with 2.57 remaining. And the 49ers need a victory desperately. They meet the Rams next on CBS as the Rams try and maintain their undefeated base. Or some of you will see the Giants against New Orleans. It looks like the Giants will need a win in that game to stay one game behind the Dallas Cowboys. Bob Holly back to throw in the face of a rush. That's three for three as Billy White Shoes Johnson makes the catch. Ricky Eastman made the tackle number 42. So Dave Archer apparently is through for the day, and Bob Holly, the number two quarterback, as Steve Bartkowski is now on injured reserve and will probably play for some other team before the end of this year is off, we've been told. Flag is down. Holly lobs it out, intercepted. Dexter Clayscale gets his second of the game. That's seven for Dexter for this year. He had five going into the Philadelphia game. No one on this team had an interception last week against Jaworski. Now he's picked up two today. Gives him seven for the year. And that is the Cowboys' fourth interception today. Holding number 57 offense. Penalty declined. Pass interception. First down the other way. Jeff Gene ben. Stallings is the first one out to congratulate him. The defensive backfield coach. So Dexter Klingscale has grabbed two of the four, and Dallas leads at 24-10 with 2.25 to go. On the sideline, Dexter Klingscale and Dennis Thurman. Thurman with five interceptions for the season, and Klingscale, just a quick correction on how many he has for the year. He's now got two for the year. First down, 10, Dallas. 2.25 to go, and Robert Levette has replaced Dorsett running back. The Cowboys have a brand new offensive line in there as Ronnie Washington makes that tackle. That is Robert Levette, fourth round draft choice from Georgia Tech. And up in the offensive line, Broderick Thompson has now come in. Mark Tuane is the new center. And Howard Richards, wearing number 70, is seeing his first action for Jim Myers, the assistant head coach, in more than a year. Just came off the physically unable to perform list earlier this week. Timeout has been called by Atlanta. Danny White on the half roll, lobs it out, caught by James Jones. He's got a first down to the 40-39 yard line, and the clock will continue to run. 
The Cowboys will be six and two at the midway point of the season. You know, it's kind of interesting to note that they bring in a brand new offensive line, bring in a new set of running backs, keep the tight end and keep the same quarterback. Maybe in a case like this, is Jim Myers is responsible for sending in the, that new change in the offensive line. Met him at Louisiana Tech, believe it or not. My freshman year over there, this guy came in from the Dallas Cowboys to teach us the blocking skills of the Cowboys, and we were all impressed to think that someone would take the time out to do that. Class man. First down and 10, 1.15 to go in the game. LeVette trips as he gets to the line of scrimmage and is knocked down at the 37-yard line, 107 to go. Tiger Green, number 33, makes the tackle, and the Falcons will call timeout. So Dan Henning's quest for the solution with this problem with this team continues. Tom Landry finally allows himself a smile. His team leads by 14. For the year coming up tonight on CBS, excuse me, 60 minutes followed by Murder, She Wrote, Crazy Like a Box, and then to cap off the evening on CBS, Trapper John, M.D. 17-10 score at the half. The Cowboys have one touchdown. Danny White with a scramble or a rollout, rather, a design play early in the fourth quarter to give them a 24-10 lead, and that's where we sit right now. Second down at eight. White will throw. Deep left side. Diving catch by Carl Poe, number 81. Eighth round draft choice out of Alabama State. And leading the cheers is Drew Pearson for Carl Poe's first catch. They liken him to an old teammate of yours, John Stallworth. Well, Danny Wagner, 36, has him. And once again, an underthrow by Danny by White, which is, in this case, is the perfect place to put the football because Wagner has Poe covered. He has a step on him. The best play to place to throw the football would have been the underthrow. That's what they did, and Poe did an outstanding job of making the catch. Has to be a happy moment for him. The Cowboys, as the Jets defeat Seattle 17-14, have a first and goal from the five with 16 seconds to go. And that ought to do it. For Dan Henning's team, one and seven. And Washington on the road next. He has a brief wave for Tom Landry on the far side of the field. Landry said earlier this week, if you told him in August he could be six and two at the midseason break, you'd take it ask any questions. He is right now. And for Don, Dan Henning's group, they will be back. For Terry Bradshaw, this is Vern Lundquist saying so long from Texas Stadium in Irving, where the final score was the Dallas Cowboys 24, the Atlanta Falcons 10. Coming next, the second half of our CBS Sports doubleheader. Most of you will see the world champion San Francisco 49ers. They call me undefeated Los Angeles Rams. Some of you will see the New York Giants and the New Orleans Saints. CBS sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your...